Hello everyone, I am Bufar one on one With Palpatine and Vader dead, as well as the introduction of the Knights of Ren, the Sith are, for all intents and purposes, gone. In Legends, there was several dark side cults that were faffing about, as well as dark side force wielders who served the Empire. However, the Sith were properly reborn around 130 ABY through Darth Krayt and his one Sith. Despite multiple wars and thousands of years of conflict and multiple purges, the Sith, and in turn Jedi, can't be put down for good. There is a reason for this, but I think V put it the best. Defiant to the end, huh? Now you won't cry like him, will you? You're not afraid of death. You're like me. The only thing that you and I have in common, Mr. Creedy, is we're both about to die. How do you imagine that's going to happen? With my hands around your neck. Bollocks. What are you going to do, huh? We've swept this place. You've got nothing. Nothing but your bloody knives and your fancy karate gimmicks. We have guns. No, what do you have are bullets. And the hope that when your guns are empty, I'm no longer standing. Because if I am, you'll all be dead before you've reloaded. That's impossible! Kill him. The Jedi and Sith are more than just religious orders dedicated to studying and practicing the Force. They are more than a set of teachings. They are ideas, and despite how many hits they take, ideas can't be killed. Despite the destruction of their empire at the end of the Great Hyperspace War, the Sith's teachings and people survived. Freed and Nad learned the ways of the Sith from the spirit of Naga Sadao, and sometime later, the spirit of Nad taught Exar Kun the ways of the Sith. And not long after that, the Great Sith War began as Kun joined forces with Ulic Keldroma, a fallen Jedi and member of the Dark Side cult known as the Krath. They attacked the Republic and convinced many young Jedi to join the Dark Side. Past this, the remnants of the original Sith Empire survived and would later corrupt Revan and Alec, or Malak, as we would later know who would then in turn join the Sith and attack the galaxy. Despite the Sith Empire still being in hiding, the ideas of the Sith survived and influenced the creation of three different Sith threats to the Republic, those being Nad, Exar Kun, and Revan Sith, to summarize rather quickly. However, despite almost complete destruction, the Sith returned stronger than before and launched the Great Galactic War, and later on, the Cold War, the time period in which SWOTOR takes place in. 
With this in mind, and the fact that the Sith Empire is no longer around, the Empire would eventually collapse as the Galactic Dark Age set in. With the onset of the Fourth Great Schism, for the Jedi, the Sith found another rebirth in the form of several different Sith Lords, and later on, the Brotherhood of Darkness. Eventually, the Brotherhood would be, let's say, reformed into the Rule of Two, which persisted until the deaths of Palpatine and Vader. Well, that's a lie, but I'll touch on that later. From here, things get confusing, due to the fact that there were several Dark Side Force wielders about, like the Inquisitor Jarek. But the Sith were more or less reformed by Lumaya, the Dark Mistress of the Sith, Dark Lady of the Sith, female Darth Vader, who may or may not have had a thing with Luke Skywalker. Being the student of Darth Vader, and eventual Hand of the Emperor, Lumaya perhaps had the most training in the ways of the Sith, despite it not being complete. Eventually, she would complete her training and eventually corrupt Jason Solo, turning him into Darth Kytus. Kytus? Whatever. Long. Very long. Story short, both Lumaya and Kytus would meet their end with the Second Galactic Civil War over. In short, Darth Bane's legacy had finally been destroyed, but the Sith still lived on. Asherad Het, Darth Krait, was a Jedi during the Clone Wars who found Korriban and eventually fell to the dark side. Again, very long story short, he created a new breed of Sith known as the One Sith. A mirror, in a sense, of the Sith of old. These Sith followed Krayt as he manipulated the galaxy into another war. Eventually, he would come to control the galaxy and almost destroy the Jedi. Again. I understand I glossed over a lot. And some of the information is very simplified, but I wanted to illustrate the point that the Sith keep getting destroyed, but keep coming back, just like their Jedi counterparts. There's a reason for this. Both the Jedi and Sith operate under a code that are opposites of one another. This is due to the fact that both codes have very different goals in mind. The Jedi code calls for internal harmony and peace through a mastery of one's emotions. The Sith call for external achievement through the mastery of one's emotions. It is those two reasons that people seek out these teachings. It has less to do with light side or dark side of the Force, though those are important. Now to parrot what I said in my video collab with the Scoundrels Cantina, a problem the Sith run into, which leads them to the dark side, is their code doesn't account for the corrupting power of, well, power. If you can do anything, why shouldn't you do anything? It is for that reason why people who follow the ways of the Sith join the dark side. But that may not have to be the case. Eventually, there will be those in the Jedi Order, or those outside of it, who do not like their lot in life. They don't like how the Jedi are doing things. Naturally, they will be drawn to the opposite of their order. In a way, we've seen this in the new canon with Ben and the Knights of Ren, though his motivation to join them with the motivation we're given is incredibly weak, but that's a different topic. To highlight my point and to show I'm not talking out my ass, let's take a look at the Sith Code. Peace is a lie, there is only passion. Fundamentally, this is merely an observation, much in the same way as nothing is true, everything is permitted. To say peace is a lie is to understand that at our core, sentient beings are restless. We always want more. There is something driving us. To say there is only passion is to accept that we are driven by our emotions, our desires, and that it's what makes us us. Through passion, I gain strength. After understanding your emotions and letting them drive you, you reach a state of enlightenment that makes you stronger as a person. You know your goals and you are now pursuing them. Through strength, I gain power. Now that you're acting upon your goals, your life is getting better. You're accomplishing what needs to be accomplished to get to your goal. Through power, I gain victory. You finally accomplished your goal. All of your hard work has paid off. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall free me. Your ability, talent, and hard work allowed you to achieve something you thought near impossible at the beginning of your journey. You now understand that nothing is impossible. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. This code, like a lot of other videos have pointed out, is a code most people live by in the modern world, in the real world. You get out what you put in. If you put your mind to something, you can achieve it. However, like I said before, the Sith run into a problem, that being, 
power corrupts. Let's take a look at some people who joined the Sith to show this a bit more. There are probably more examples of this, but I'm just doing a few because I don't want this to be a hour long video. So let's use Revan and Alec. They joined the Sith after refusing to sit around like the rest of the Jedi Order during the Mandalorian Wars. They wanted to stop the Mandalorians, which eventually led them down the path of becoming Sith. They wished to stop the Mandalorians. That was their goal, their aim. Anakin joined Palpatine so he could learn the secrets of the Force in order to prevent his wife from dying a childbirth, and in turn, possibly save his kid. Even Luke joined the Sith in order to stop Palpatine from constantly coming back to life via his clones. Granted, this one's a bit of a stretch, but there are examples of people joining the Sith to achieve something, be it changing their lot in life as witnessed with Anakin, or changing the course of the galaxy as witnessed with Revan and Malak. One thing I want to kind of point out, which is an interesting trend, a lot of Sith come from two backgrounds it seems. Either they were slaves, or had a terrible upbringing, or were incredibly rich. That could be a video someday, but I wanted to point it out here. Granted, there are a lot of bad eggs, like Freedon, Nad, and Exar Kun, but, well I'll get to this. With the Knights of Ren around, the Sith could actually have a chance at becoming something more. With the establishment of the fact that the Sith Order is very hard to kill, and that they're merely an opposite to an idea that is at the core of the Jedi, another group who just can't stay dead, I'm going to elaborate on the future of the Sith. I'm finally getting to the point of this video. Going at this from an in-universe perspective, because the real world politics behind it are fucked, the Sith will return. It may take them centuries, but they're going to come back. Worlds such as Yavin 4, Duxun, Drumunkas, Zyost, and especially Korriban are still around. The spirits and teachings of the ancient Sith still exist, just waiting to be discovered. With the current conflict against the First Order taking place near the unknown regions, and the fact the Jedi are all but gone, again, the space around ancient Sith worlds is more or less quiet. No one is paying attention to it. All it takes is one Jedi who survived the newest purge. One force sensitive with a lust for power. One person who wants to change the galaxy. To seek out these teachings and learn. For the Sith to return. However, the Knights of Ren do spice things up. A bit. Much like the Fell Empire and the Legacy comics. Without the corrupting influence of the Sith, the Fell Empire became the embodiment of everything good that the Galactic Empire once stood for. Order. Stability. Straight up style while avoiding things such as genocide and slavery, until Krayt took over. The Knights of Ren are an order that's following the dark side. We can witness this with Kylo's devotion to trying to fall to the dark side. So with this in mind, those who wish to learn the dark side will seek out the Knights of Ren instead of the Sith, which means that idea of external achievement, that idea of changing the galaxy, is the main draw some of the bad eggs have been weeded out. The Sith could very well come back as they were, dark side wielding bad guys, but there is a chance, now more than ever, that the Sith can become something more. Those who desire power have the Knights of Ren, in order of the dark side with a galactic civilization behind them, but those who want to see change, those who want to achieve something, may very well be the ones to bring back the Sith. Now one fair point is the fact that the teachings of the Sith are tied into the dark side, that the spirits of the Sith Lords, those who are really the only ones who could offer any sort of training, would corrupt those who seek them out. This is true, but I like to point out Star Wars The Old Republic. Think of that game what you will. But in that game, not only can your Sith characters avoid the temptations of the dark side and become guardians of the light, but as witnessed with Jaysa Wilsam, no matter which path you choose, there were, and are, Sith who avoided the temptations of the dark side. They were Sith who followed the ways of the light. So again, I'm repeating myself. With the Knights of Ren offering the teachings of the dark side, those drawn by power alone would be attracted to join them. While those attracted by the idea of external achievement and change would be attracted by the Sith. The Sith's future is one of rebirth. They could come back as they were, and it's very likely, but they have a real chance of coming back as something new, something different, something greater than they have ever been. So 
that's all I got for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it all made sense. Tell me what you think down below. Do you think the Sith will come back? What do you think they would be like if they came back? It's just something I've been thinking about because, again, ideas are very hard to kill. And ideas, the ideas that are at the core of the Jedi and Sith are so strong, they keep getting wiped out, but they keep coming back. So I highly doubt the Sith are gone for good. But, again, they could come back different. But yeah, again, tell me what you thought down below. I've been Boofar one-on-one. -on -one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I want to try to make more videos like this, but I have a hard time coming up with topics. There you go. So yeah, I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye.